Hallelujah. I welcome every one of you to another edition of our GMP program, which is titled What Does God Says? Don't forget, GMP stands for Global Miracle Program and is titled What Does God Says? What Does God Says is the title of this program. As many of you that have been following us, I know you will be blessed because there have been a lot of testimony across the nation, across the globe. And by the grace of God, we have an interesting topic which I believe you and your entire family are going to be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days, in Jesus' name. As we go, you go with us and you shall be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. By the special grace of Almighty God today, God will allow me to elaborate on what I have fabricated, the moral, presentism, and meta-absentism. The mystery of moral presentism and meta-absentism is the topic we will be talking or discussing today. That is what we'll be discussing today, wherever you are. Please listen very well because we have uh, enough way to go on this program, or rather on this uh, topic. The mystery of moral presentism and mental absentism. What do I mean by moral presentism and mental absentism? Moral presentism, mental absentism. So it is very possible that morally you will be present, but mentally you shall you will be absent. It's possible that physically you are present, but spiritually you are completely absent. It's possible morally, uh, physically you are present, but emotionally you are absent. And the common language is accent minded so accent minded simply mean you may be there but you are not there you are right there but what they are doing you are not there so when you are there and you are not there it simply mean you are present but you are absent that is all we will be discussing about right now present but absent there are some of you there that are always present but at the same time absent and I would like to give you the quick kukaku about present and absent. I would like to elaborate on it in detail. It's possible that you are right there, but you are not there. Two ways. If you are in a group and your heart is not connected with what they are doing, you are there, but you are not connected. Your heart is in another place you are discussing right here but your mind is very far from what they are discussing you are present you are absent another thing if you are with them but you don't believe what they are doing you are automatically present but absent the bible says in our chapter I, I chapter 2, he said they were all together in one accord, in one place, with one mind, unanimously, and the power of God came down. So, if you are there, your heart connected, your mind connected, you are there. But if you are there and you are not connected, and you don't believe what they are doing, ladies and gentlemen, I say you are present, but you are absent. You are present, but you are absent. Hallelujah. Now, let, I want to uh, show you a certain man in the Bible before we proceed on this topic. In John chapter 20, from 24 to 29, when you have time, you can read it yourself. John 20, 24 to 29. There was a man called Thomas. He was a disciple of Jesus Christ. Jesus taught the world for three and a half years on earth. This man was one of the disciples. He was with Jesus. And Jesus told them, I am going to die and after three days I will resurrect again. And I will still see you people. 
And by the special grace of God, Jesus died and he resurrected on the third day. Fortunately and unfortunately, he was in the mix of the 12 apostles, except Thomas. So there were 11. Thomas was not there. And they saw Jesus and they embraced him. They honored him. They welcomed him. But the man Thomas wasn't there. So by the time he might have came back and they told him that Jesus was here and he was present, he doubted. He said, I will not believe until I see. I will not believe until I see. So that was that was to say, or that is to say, even when he was with Jesus, he never believed in Jesus. He never believed what Jesus was saying. Even as he saw signs and wonders, miracles, he never still believed that Jesus can still die and resurrected. He was of a new faith. In short, he was faithless completely. When Jesus came, when Jesus had this word, Jesus was highly offended. Said, How could this man be with me and still not have believed me? Just imagine the situation. In verse 29 of John chapter 20, when they were when they assembled together again, Jesus came and he saw Jesus. And Jesus said, John, Jesus said, Thomas, feel my hand, touch my place. And he said, My God and my Lord. And Jesus said, Oh, you now believe because you have seen me. He said, Blessed are those who have not seen, but they believed. Automatically, that blessing he was not among because he does not believe until he see. But those that does not see, they believe Jesus blessed them. That is why until the end of the Bible, there have not been any written about uh, Thomas because he was a doubter. And the Bible says in James chapter 1 from 6 to 8, it says you should not doubt it's all because he that doubt is just like a wave of sea. It says a doubted man is unstable in all his ways. That kind of a person should not be expecting any miracle. Are you a data? If you are a data, you are present and absent. How many of you are really believe God? How many of us believe in this Bible? Most of us believe what the prophet told us than what the Bible is saying. How many of us are right here in the church and we still believe that God is actually in existence? How many of you carry your Bible, go to church on Sunday, the pastor preach and you come back home and still believing that everything the pastor said is true? How many of you still believe God is alive? How many of you believe Jesus is alive? How many of you believe he is still coming? How many of you believe that there is hell and there is hell fire? The reason why many of us complain in the church, Usher offended me, I'm not going to that church. Pastor offended me, I'm not going to that church. Choir offend me, I'm not singing again. This and that. Because we did not believe for the very first time. I have been giving money to the church. I have been helping the church. Since the church is not aware of what I've been doing, since they are not appreciating, I'm not doing again, I'm not going again. Because you have not believed in Jesus Christ. Your mind is telling you that all you are doing, you're doing it for God. Sorry, you are doing it for the pastor. You are doing it for the church. You are not doing it for God. Because the first business man on earth here is God. Whatever you do for God, God says, I will reward you in this life and in life to come. So if you believe in this area, you should be able to know that what you are doing in the house of God, you are not doing for man, you are not doing for Dicky, no other. You are doing it for God and there is a reward of it. But if you don't believe this, you are about to complain. How many of you are believing and say, God, until you give me my baby, I will not believe you. How many of you are saying, God, I'll be praying for a husband, I'll be praying for a wife. Just give me my husband, I will know that you actually existed. Hey, I do among those that believe, that accept they receive before they believe, or you believe before you receive. The Bible says in Hebrew 11, 1, faith is sometimes of things hoped for, but the evidence of things is not seen. So if you are seeing this, it's no longer a faith. And Jesus says, blessed is there 
that have not seen that yet they believe. Many of us easily give up. We have been looking for one thing and the other. Because the still refuse to come, we begin to doubt, we complain, we murmur. Many of us do not even believe Jesus is alive. We don't even believe God can do it. We are living a microwave society that we want it to be right now and then. Nobody want to uh, society person. Nobody want to believe. We want it to be done now. We are in a microwave world, a microwave church that the miracle have to warm within five minutes. That they have to be now. I can no longer be waiting. I'll be waiting. I'm tired of waiting. There is no God in that church. There is no God in heaven and earth. Even my friend who does not believe God, they are prospering. Me that are in the church, I still remain where I am. So I have to change my situation. I have to change my belief. I have to go and try other way. You are already a doctor. So when you come to the church, you are present morally, but mentally you are completely absent. So a person like that should not be expecting that he's going to receive something. Thomas never received anything from Jesus Christ because he had been a doubting. He had been a doubter, he had been doubting, and he still doubt. And Jesus says, you are not a mom because you are a doubter. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to urge you this time, I want to admonish you. Have you been expecting God? Because that thing has not yet to come, and you decided to doubt, keep it off, don't continue to doubt again. Remove your, your uh, take your faith out of the doubting, and focus your attention on Jesus Christ. Are you expecting him? Have you been doing good? People have been offending, offending you. Keep on doing your good. Keep on doing your good. Don't for, don't uh, bother or mind about what people are doing. How many people have offended you? Don't bother. Jesus is there. He is the one that you are pleading. He is the one that you are helping. He is the one that you will please and not people. And at the time of uh, uh, remembrance, he will always remember your good. The Bible says he is not an unjust God to forget the labor that we have labored in his house. He will always remember in due time. Don't forget uh, Galatians 7. Whatever a man sow, he shall reap. Whether good or bad, whatever a man sow, he shall reap. If you are a Christian, you believe the Bible. If you believe the Bible, believe God. Even if you are not a Christian, even if you are not believed, I urge you from now to believe that the word of God is settled in heaven. He is still yet an amen. He has never changed. He will never change. Whatever you are believing, there is time and season for everything. So if you are that, that I always doubt that does not believe, you are present but absent. But if you are the one that actually believe with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, believe completely, you are the one that act, that are present morally, physically, mentally, in every area, you are present and you are a part of the blessings of God. And I urge you to usher yourself in this area and be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, as we move forward about present but absent, I still want to show you another case file, case file of Peter. Peter in the Bible, in the Acts of Apostle chapter 12, Acts chapter 12, verse 12 to 16. Now Peter was being arrested by Herod and he was kept in prison. And the Bible says, Church gathered and they were praying for Peter, the apostles and every other one. From 12, they gathered and they were praying for Peter to be released. Guess what? Peter was being released. And the Bible says from 12, when Peter have considered these things, ah, he said, this is God in action. What do I do? Peter moved. He moved to the house where they have gathered, where they were praying for him. Fortunately and unfortunately, when Peter got there, he knocked at the door. When Peter knocked at the door, the Bible says a young lady called Rhoda came to open the door. When he heard that it was Peter's voice, he got back, informed them Peter had been released. They said, you are mad. In short, my very first time to see a cost person in the church. They told, Peter, they told Rhoda, you are mad. And Rhoda said, no, I know what I'm saying. This is the voice of Peter. And they concluded, they said, no, 
since you have insisted that it's Peter, which means it might have been his ghost. Peter have died in the hand of Herod. Nobody go to the hand of Herod and survive. Peter have died over there. It's the ghost of Peter that you have been seeing. We are just gathered to pray for praying sake. We just want to pray for the sake of praying. We know very well that this our prayer cannot uh, deliver Peter. We know God will not hear us. We just want to do it as a formality. We just want to do it in carnally. We are casual and we are casuality. And the result we are getting is casual result. How many of you actually go to church to pray and believe that God is God that answers prayer? How many of you are asking and actually believing? Hey, if Peter could have depend, if God could have depend on the prayer of these people, I believe Peter could have rotten there in jail because they were praying for prayer's sake. They never believed. If they believe, I expected them. By the time the road that give them a good information, they will say, Oh, thank you, Jesus. They will go and rescue Peter. But right there, they never believe that God can answer instant prayer. That is why when men of God say, Rise and walk, and the people, the cripple, rise and walk, people will conclude, they will say, No, this is not God. This is above the power of God. They are forgetting that the power of God is not limited to any situation, it's not limited to any condition. He is above whatever you may think or imagine. So, they never believe. When they say, black man, open your eye, and the eye open, they say, no, 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 no. This is devil. This is not God. They begin to doubt. And God says, this kind of people have no portion in my own kingdom. People are just so casual. They come to church to pray. In short, these days, people believing ceremonial service more than spiritual service formality casuality ah let's go and do the meeting ah okay this is the new cloth we are going to sew now so, all right let's go and cook in the church people believe celebrating in the church cooking in the church god bless you eat dance and go back home they never actually attach spiritual effect with what they are doing they never actually attach spirituality. Everything is carnality, casual. Some people come to church because they want to dance. They believe that brother sang very well. They believe the drama list. They believe that church. In short, there is praises in that church. Let's go and praise and dance with our new cloth and go. And the, most of the men of God are lacking in this area to tell them, Thank you, somebody like me. I'm not against celebration. I'm not against anything. But people value celebration more than the celebrity. Jesus is the celebrity. Jesus is the reason for the season. Even when we are celebrating, even when we are jubilating, we should also remember the source, that Jesus is the source of our happiness. You don't come to church because you want to dance, because you want to show your style, because you want to perform, because you know how to speak a good English. That is not the reason why church is being established. Church are being established to celebrate Jesus. People are not celebrating Jesus. They are celebrating clothes. They are celebrating pastors. They are celebrating themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pitiable disma pisma. For people to still believe that Jesus is still far. Jesus is not far. Jesus is closer to you like the clothes you are wearing in the body. If only you can recognize him. If only you can know he is right here. If only you can know that he is the source of all source. If only you can know that he is the midst of all means. Ladies and gentlemen, your answer, your miracle is around the corner. Very close to you. But first of all, recognize the source of the miracle. And you shall be blessed. These people never believe in Jesus. They never believe he can actually answer prayer. Until Peter keep on knocking. The Bible says he keep on knocking. And when they have opened the door for Peter, and Peter got in, the Bible, the Bible says they were astonished. They were all afraid. They wanted to take off. They wanted to run. They said, no, 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 this is not Peter. This is the host. Peter might have died. Peter said, no, 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 sit down. I have God that can do abundantly, exceedingly, more than what you think. Is God of possibility. 
In his dictionary, there is nothing like impossibility. He can do all things. That is why he is the Otokinado. No one can challenge him. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll show you two cases for, for people that have been present but absent. The last one, Samuel chapter 1, verse 10. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 10. Anna had been going to Sino. She had been going there, celebrate with the husband. The husband gave her all kind of what he needed and she enjoyed the normal prayer, the normal worship, everything, and go back home. Until the Bible says in verse 10 that the rabbi also uh, provoked her. And she said, now, I want to change my pattern. <laughs> The husband says, take. She said, no, I'll be eating. I'll be drinking. It's time for fasting. It's time to do business. It's time to be connected. Let's forget about the casualty. Let me forget about what I'll be doing. I'm not concentrated. The mind connected. The Bible says in verse 10 that Anna prayed as she had never prayed before. I want you to pray as you have never prayed before. I want you to serve God as you have never served before. I want you to believe as you have never believed before. Are you in this situation? Are you in condition? Believe. Change your pattern. You have been coming to church casually. But right now, come to church in reality, not in casuality. Make business with God. Anna made business. He prayed earnestly. He learned, she no longer shall. She decided to trace the root of all root. And the Bible says, God answered him. Even when the prince of the church got her offended, embarrassed her by saying, you might have drunk. She said, my dear, I'm not drunk. Oh. <laughs> People have been offending me. I have been giving excuses right now. Even when you offended me, I am not listening again. Don't forget, a woman with the issue of blood, even when us tackle were everywhere, passing her back, she refused to listen and hearken to them because she know what they need. The people that know what they need in the church, in the hand of God, are the people that make it. People that listen to sad talk, they are not focused. People that always are fault finders, Excuses everywhere. They cannot make it. They cannot go to heaven. They cannot achieve their goal. The people that can actually achieve their goal are the people that listen. Hebrew chapter 12 verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. People that can grab their miracle are people that are not looking unto pastor. They are not looking unto members. They are looking unto Jesus because he has been doing it before. Lord Wonder in Hebrew chapter 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Jesus Christ is the same today. He is the same forever. He never changed. He changes situations. He never changed. He changed time and season. He did throw kings and he throw kings. He is not a man that he should lie. Neither a son of man that he should repent. If he has promised, he will do. If he say yes, no man can say no. If he be for you, no man can be against you. If he lift you up, no man can be for you. If he lift you up, no man can be. No man can put you down. I want to tell you that this time around. Because you have believed in him, Jesus Christ is on your side. Power is on your side. Miracle is on your side. Hey, he is greater than the greatest. He is bigger than the biggest. He is mightier than the mightiest. He is the unbreakable breaker. He is the unshakable shaker. He is the unmovable mover. Who is that matter before Jerusalem, before Zerubbabel? He shall be leveled like a playground. Ladies and gentlemen, are you sick? Hey, I want you to recognize him as the great physician, the master healer. He will heal you. Are you lonely? Are you in coma? You don't know what to do? Hey, he is the father to the fatherless. He is the mother to the motherless. Are you decided? He is the husband to those that, are, that have no husband. The husband to the widows, the wife to the widowers. Ladies and gentlemen, are you confused? You don't know what to do? If you can recognize him, if you can know him as the only way. The driver says he is the way. 
the carpenter says he is the door. The sailor says he is the captain of salvation. The pilot says he is the compass that we use to move. Ladies and gentlemen, are you a problem? Are you a kind of trouble? Are you in the hand of the police? Are you in prison? The lawyer says he is the chief mediator. He is the advocate of the universe. He can advocate on your behalf. Are you hungry? You don't have money? You, are you stranded? The caterer says he is the bread of life. Are you in problem running up and down? The soldier says he is the prince of peace. Are you in that place? The electrical engineer says he is the electrical of the is the light of the world. I don't know the situation you are finding yourself. I don't know what you are calling him. Are you in the kind of struggle, problem, and somebody says I will kill you? Hey, my cold I call him Jehovah Vitor. He is Jehovah Vitor because he has never lost any battle. He is Jehovah Emmanuel. Jehovah Emmanuel means God with us. That is my name. He is Jehovah Emmanuel. He will fight for you. He can fight the unseen battle. He specializes in fighting battles. He avenge for the less privileged. Whatever the situation you are, whatever the stage you are, know him, recognize him as the lion of the tribe of Judah. That is the name zoology recognizing to be. And the astrologer says is the bright and the morning star. He is around the corner. He is here to vindicate you. He is here to minister to you. He is here to see you through. Change your pattern. Change your motive. Change your mentality. Act like Anna. Behave like Anna. Change all the strategy. The only inevitable, the only indispensable thing in life is change. Change all the ways you are serving him. Serve him in truth and in spirit. He is looking for people to serve him in truth and in spirit. People to worship him in truth and in spirit. He always avenge for them. He will avenge for you. He will see you through. He will minister to you. In any situation you find yourself, ladies and gentlemen, call upon him in the days of trouble. He will set you free. He will deliver you. You will hold your peace. The Egyptian you see today, you will see there again no more. In the mighty name of Jesus. To the glory of his name. In Jesus' name we pray. Stay blessed.